Hey guys, God bless. Welcome back to Twist and Shout. And today we have another episode of Bible Plus Tea. So I definitely have my tea and it is well needed. I'm feeling very, very queasy on the stomach. I don't know what's going on. I've been like this all day. And yes, this episode is filmed not in the morning because <laughs> it's been a morning like Y'all, y'all just don't understand. Stuff that's been going on. But I have my tea and I have my citrus tea with a herbal detox tea and another tea mix. So uh, that's good. And I have some honey in there. So hopefully that will settle the stomach. But I'm going to keep it real light with you guys on today. I'm actually in Psalms. If you guys can see that. I'm just going to move the camera so you can read along with me in case you are unable to get to a Bible. I'm going to read Psalms 122 and 121. So actually 121 and well, 120 to 122. How about that? We can do that. So let me just come up a little bit and zoom in just a tad bit. Hopefully you guys can see that. And if you are new here, I love you. God bless you. This is just a... Uh, a moment with God that I do. I have my tea and I just give the scripture and we discuss it a little bit. All right. Psalms 120. I call on the Lord in my distress and he answered me. Save me, Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. What will he do to you? And what more besides you deceitful tongue? He will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows with burning coals of the broom bush. Woe to me that I dwell in Meshech, that I live among the tents of Kiar. Too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Now, this is a very short and simple song. This Verse that uh, stood out to me when I read this some time ago, I want to say an earlier part of this year was verse two, but I will start with verse one. It says, I call on the Lord in my distress and he answered me. So I would like to say that one thing I noticed on my other social media platforms and people I talk to in person or in everyday life, there seems to be an mood that has planted itself on a lot of us and for someone like me who already has social anxiety and stress and dealt with depression and postpartum and things that affect you for sometimes a short period of time, sometimes a long period of time. This is the time where Satan is really roaming in and out of our lives. It's causing chaos and havoc and causing us to stress over the littlest of things. Whereas just in 2019, we had the do not fret attitude, right? And now in 2020, it's so unpredictable, it's so rude, it's so disrespectful, it's so all over the place that I think most of us at at least one or two given times this year, we kind of tend to forget who we can run to and who we can give our problems to. And that is God almighty. Even myself, like I sit here like, oh, my mind is racing. I'm stressed. Things are breaking. Things are being broken uh, within me and my mind. I'm having situations with the children, with health, with my mom, my vehicle, my home, anything you can think of, it has been chaotic. And that scripture alone is plain and simple and to the point and say, look, I have all these problems. They are big and small, but I give them to the one who can answer me. I tell them to the one who cares. I leave them at the feet of Jesus because he is interceding on behalf of me. And what greater duty or deed that can be done a month, anybody, but to intercede on behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ. And Jesus is currently doing that all day, every day pleading on our behalf, sitting on the right hand. And we should not, we shall not forget that. Verse two says, save me Lord from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. We just experienced a, a uh, 
election week <laughs> and it's still being dragged out. We have people going to court. We have people lying, being deceitful, changing ballots, stealing ballots. We have a lot of people doing a lot of deceitful things and tell a lie straight to our face. We have to remember that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So by any means necessary. But we are not unaware of these things. We are to stand on our posts and be on guard and to continuous pray and ask God to reveal the false teachings and the false prophets and the lies and deceit that come across our ears and our visuals every single day. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and harp down to verse six that says, too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. So naturally, instinctively, we say, I just want peace. I just want peace. I just want peace. But we know that Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace. I come to bring the division. I come to separate the 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 truth from the lies. So that's going to stir up corruption and division between mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, cousins, co-workers. Like, just think about this election, for example, the Democrats and Republicans. Man, oh man, have you yet seen such a nasty brawl and debate amongst those two parties? And it's only going to get worse. So please be on guard and be careful. So I'm going to move down now to 121. And I am skipping around, but I do want you to read the whole uh, Psalms for yourself. But I'm just hitting key points. And I'm trying to make this straight for you somewhat. Psalms 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will help you from all harm. He will watch over you, over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. We are very, very familiar with this psalm. This psalm has been made into a song. One that uh, I have a cousin who um, a lot of people love to hear her sing this particular song. And it's so beautiful and it's so angelic. And it has so much meaning, so much meat. So again, I may seem like I'm wretched, but I beg you to go back and actually take notes for yourself. But we can just go one by one here. I lift up the eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? We know that we, we hear the quote, God sits high and looks low. There is nothing or no one above him, period. So you'll find in scripture that they use peaks, mountaintops, clouds, sky as a reference of where he is to kind of signify that he is the highest level. So however high you need to think and go, whether space and beyond, then whatever will help you to understand that there is nothing above or higher than God's presence. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Sometimes, as me and my husband pray, we often remind ourselves that God is the creator. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And these are two great divine masks of matter. They're huge. And not just earth and the moon, but the whole universe and the galaxies. Like God created all of that. Think about how large of a scale that is. If God can create that, he can surely help me and my problems. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. God doesn't sleep. He doesn't rest. He's continuously working. He's continuously working in our lives and our minds and our hearts. And that means if we are to be like our father or be about our father's business, shouldn't we be changing continually? Shouldn't we be doing things to better ourselves as we go on? Now, we as humans, we have to rest. But even let your rest be sweet and holy and acceptable in God's sight. Like think of the good things before you rest and go to sleep so that that can continue to work in your mind as you sleep. Like I used to, when I was pregnant, used to make sure that the Bible was the last thing I touched before I closed my eyes. And oftentimes I did meditate and focus on the scripture and my sleep was so sweet. But <laughs> when I woke up in the morning, morning sickness and all that foolishness went on. It's like, oh, can I go back to sleep? And most times I did. But anywho, the Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. 
Like no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what time of day, nothing will harm you in the light of what's not okay. I say that because we do know we do go through trials and tribulations, but I believe this scripture in particular is just simply saying like, listen, no matter the day or hour, no matter morning, noon or night, God is covering you and he is with you. Your feet, it says, will not slip. And we know that that is also like a metaphor indicating like failure or to fall. And we know that we, we're going to sin. We are going to fall short of his glory, but we are to keep going and we are to keep pressing towards the mark. And even if we, you know, pause for a little while, it is not uh, forever. It's only a temporary moment. The Lord will keep you from all harm. Basically what I just said, he will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. So it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, what you doing. God will keep control of your life, but you have to keep them. Amen.